This is Twit. People are running geek bench <laughs> benchmarks to see what the performance is like. Of course they are. And remember that this L Apple Silicon thing is running the same uh, processor, a system on a chip that's inside of an iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that compared to Surface Pro X, which is running what today is basically the fastest ARM processor for PCs, the performance is almost exactly the same. Wait and that minute. sounds it's, great. It's worse than that. I know, I know. Because <laughs> Rosetta is running, I mean, uh, Geekbench is running in Rosetta because yeah. there isn't a native version of Geekbench. That's right. So it's an so emulated benchmark and it's and it's matching Surface X. That's right. Mm. So yikes. Here's the, <laughs> yeah. I know, so that's a problem, right? That's so a problem. The, yeah. The native performance of that thing is going to be dramatically better than Surface Pro X. And Boy, by did the I way, that's it's a two-year-old chip. Did you mention that they're only using half of the cores? Yeah. Or did you mention that this isn't <laughs> mm -hmm. the thing that's going to be yeah. max? This is the thing yeah. they made before. They have new things that are yeah. coming. In. So yeah. Yeah. all kinds of caveats to this. But um, I, Mary Jo knows Jeff Woolsey at Microsoft. Uh, he had mm -hmm. an interesting set of responses to this uh, in um, and on Twitter. And he was saying, he goes, look, I'm old enough to remember when Apple used to tout the benefit of PowerPC over Intel by using specific uh, Power, um, what do you call it, Photoshop filters th that had been hand written to run properly on that chipset. Absolutely. And sure. they were the only mm -hmm. ones that did. And they exaggerated the impact of the performance. Mm -hmm. And I, and he said what I've always suspected, which is that, you know, Apple, like a lot of other chip makers, tailors these things so that they do score well on benchmarks. So, yeah, but, we'll geek, see, but geek bench is, I mean, you you can't say, no, no, oh, they're not, using, yeah. you know, I mean, that's kind no, of the geek That bench. result is, no matter how you look at it, yeah. the Apple Silicon thing, which is like, again, not what they're going to ship on a computer, is already way better. But and I don't blame, truthfully, that's not Microsoft's fault. That's a Qualcomm issue. Microsoft mm -hmm. needs to use better silicon. That's clear. Well, uh, yeah. I, yeah, so it's complicated because it's it, you can't really mm -hmm. it's both of them in some ways because, but I, I, I don't know how when you're partnering, you can do something like what Apple is doing by itself because for Qualcomm, like I said probably last week, the potential market from from Microsoft doesn't move the needle very much for them, so mm -hmm. I'm sure this is an important maybe Microsoft's paying a ton to make this make sense for them or something, but I mean even if. Qualcomm became 100% of the PC market. This is still whatever that is, one yeah. seventh thing to size. A tiny of the, segment, yeah. One tenth. It is. Yeah. Um, and that's not what's happened. So, you know, we'll see. And and they've discovered over time, you know, smartphone chips aren't going to cut it. Slightly modified chips aren't going to cut mm -hmm. it. But at some point, you're going to, you know, move the hardware enough that you lose some of the benefits of what you would have on ARM. Mm -hmm. especially the epic battery life yep. um, in order to get the performance needed for windows to run correctly. And the problem ultimately is that windows is just too big and too heavy and too old. It has too much legacy nonsense in it uh, for this ever to be super efficient. Whereas Apple has been hastily chopping off stuff from mm -hmm. macOS over the years, the current, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the, the primary difference between these two companies. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, uh, I wonder we'll when we're going to see 10 X on arm. Yeah, they've well, said they've never said publicly it will be on ARM, but I've heard it will be sometime at some point. It will be. be right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean about that obviously, but I uh, the problems uh, there's a lot of problems here. I mean, 10x yeah. as in, as we've seen it in the emula or the uh, virtual environment is not not particularly uh, sophisticated looking. <laughs> let's say compared to <laughs> Mac OS. No, Big it's Sur, totally yeah. not. It's more like Android, uh, right? It kind of looks yeah. like that. It really yeah. does, yeah. Which is whatever, but it, it's. Yeah. Anyway. But but you know, I, I, look, I I always respond or react to things like this in in the seven stages of grief or whatever the number of stages are. But you know, <laughs> I I I'm I I know too much about the stuff not to be freaked out about it. But yeah. but you know, yeah. like a lot of the things we've been saying here today. I mean, Microsoft's business is different, and blah blah blah. And, Whatever. I mean, like Apple successfully making this transition, is this what's the real what's the real world impact on Microsoft at the end of the day? Mm. And I don't know. I mean, even if Apple doubled their market share in two years, that would mean they would yeah. have less than fifteen percent of the market. Like I don't know. right. I, 
and are they going to double their market share because of this? No. In fact, there's a risk so. they'll cut their market share because of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they probably don't care because they'll sell more iPads. They don't care. Their revenue, yeah. you know, by the way, their margins go up if they don't have to buy chips from Intel. Mm -hmm. Performance goes up, okay, margins if, go up. It's They're in good shape. But Microsoft's in good shape, too, because they're not selling desktop operating systems and computers. That's not they're their not. business. So, nope. By the way, so here's the <laughs> other half of that, too. So I, 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 I can't remember where I saw this, but... The other half of the story, of course, is Intel and the hardware and the and the problem with Intel. Remember, Intel spent several years trying to get to 10 nanometers and it couldn't, kept missing deadlines. And what's going on? They're like mm -hmm. the biggest company and uh, biggest chip making company in the world, basically. How come they can't do this? Um, really strange. But you know, when you look at Intel's business, Intel's business is going in the same direction as Microsoft's. Right now, over 50% of their revenues come from chips that are headed to data centers and cloud servers. Mm. So that's a big transition because if you, I don't know the time frame exactly, but if, I'm sure if you went back 10 years or certainly 15, the vast majority of their revenues would have come from PCs. Mm -hmm. But their world is changing too. And I don't mean to say maybe they don't care, but maybe they too, like Microsoft, have said, look, this is a new world. We're going to focus on the stuff that makes that, that is important. Remember there were uh, mm. chipset shortages supposedly with PCs. So we didn't have enough of the right kind of chips. How does that happen? Well, it happens when that's mm -hmm. not your most important market. When you're not really paying attention to that thing because it's not the primary driver of your revenues and you make the wrong chips, you're like, eh, whatever, we'll get to it next quarter. You know, this is, that's the other half of this problem. Um, mm -hmm. Intel may just not care. So they they move yeah. slowly. We, you know, we're starting to see the different kinds of cores appear in their systems. And you know, certainly you can get a PC that has really good battery life and all that stuff, but... I don't know. I'm testing an AMD laptop right now. I got to say it's it's freaking awesome, actually. Mm. And mm. Uh, I don't care if my future doesn't have Intel in it. You know, right. I don't care at all.